what's up? I'm Katie Faye. I'm All Weight Watchers, and this is what I eat in a day. It is one o'clock, and thanks to this little one, I have not eaten anything all day. So let's change that, shall we? For lunch, I had an uh, old standby, an old favorite, and that's Rayo's tomato soup with a baked potato. For the baked potato, I just microwaved it. This is a large baked potato, so I did five minutes on one side and three minutes on the other side. So how I know if it's a small, medium, or large potato is basically how long it takes the microwave. If it is a small potato, it takes five to six minutes. A medium potato takes six to eight, and a large potato takes five to, or sorry, eight to 10 minutes to cook in the microwave. And that's the logic I use as far as tracking it on the Weight Watchers app, since small, medium, and large are kind of subjective. Once the potato was done, I uh, finished it off with some, I can't believe it's not butter spray for zero points, an eighth of a cup of reduced fat Mexican blend cheese, and some fresh cracked black pepper. And, you know, it's one of my faves. It's a standby. It hits the spot. I loved it. As for the Rayo's tomato soup, I had half a jar of that, and I also added in half a tablespoon of heavy cream, just because the Rayo's tomato soup is not as creamy as I like it, and honestly, all it needs is just that touch of cream, um, and it is perfect. This is one of my favorite standbys. If you've been here since round one with Weight Watchers pre-baby, then you know how often I have this meal. Today was a snow day, so it was just the perfect lunch, and it really hit the spot. And it was at this point that I started to get suspicions that Weight Watchers has changed their program since I got pregnant. The entire time, I thought, oh my gosh, I get so many points because I'm breastfeeding. I am now wondering if they have revamped their program, and now everyone gets a lot of points, but the foods are more expensive. The reason I think that is because before I got pregnant, this entire jar of soup used to be one point. Also half of the jar was one point. It wasn't ever zero points unless you ate like a small amount of it. However, um, now the entire jar is four points and the half the jar is two, which is still pretty reasonable. And I'm happy with that. But then there's some other meals that were like my chicken noodle soup. Yes, I used chicken thighs, and yes, I used uh, cheese tortellini, so it, it was going to be more expensive than it was pre-pregnancy, but it was a lot. Like, I was shocked by how much more expensive it was for me when tomato soup was like, or chicken noodle soup previously was like very few points, and then it ended up being like nine points the other day when I made it, um, so I'm wondering if they've done that. The other possibility is that they haven't changed the program, but I do know that Rayo's was recently purchased by Campbell's. However, the soup tastes the same, so I don't necessarily think that it's the soup, but that is a possibility. But anyway, that's my one. If I had one complaint, I have a, a couple complaints about Weight Watchers, but my biggest one is that they changed the program. They change it to get people who've tried it before to try it again. Therefore, they make more money, and that's what makes the world go round, like it or not. Um, however, it's really annoying for the people who are actually like, hey, but I'm on the program, and it's working for me, and I really like it, and the new program's going to work for you too because they never change the program. Like, the points, it's still, like, you can always still eat the same things. However, you just have to rework your brain to think about it like a different way. It's more expensive, but it you also have more points now so you can afford more. Or sometimes it'll be way cheaper, but you also have less points. So you have to be careful with how you spend those few points that you have. And they switch up the zero food, the zero point foods every now and then. And I truly believe it all works out to the same macros. And I also think that they have a rotation that they do. Like every five years, it goes back to what it was five years ago and they have different versions of it. It's really annoying when you're working the program and 
the program's working and then you just have to deal with those like minor annoyances. I remember last year I signed up for a 30 day free trial in October and then when they, when I actually started paying for it, once they had my money, they changed it and that really irritated me and it's kind of getting on my nerves this year too. But anyway, I digress. Here's lunch, got my baked potato, got my Rails tomato soup, 12 points, uh, which leaves me with 29 points left for the day. And then I have water. Well, slap my booty and call me Rachel Ray because tonight's 13 point dinner took less than 30 minutes get it rachel ray 30 minute meal anyway um and not only did it take less than 30 minutes to cook but i also prepped tomorrow's night tomorrow night's dinner um which spoiler alert i'm recording this voiceover the next day and i've already eaten that dinner and it was delicious and it was also a 30 minute meal because of all of the prep that i did um in this video that you're watching right now so let's get into it so tonight's dinner was shake and bake pork chops with honey glazed carrots and a caesar salad so i know shake and bake pork chops is it inspired no but is it delicious yes and it totally the entire meal just tasted like comfort like it was a very comfort food dinner which was perfect because i don't know if you can see out the window it was a snow day so um, loved it. Right now, what you see me doing is breaking up this pork loin. It's like a three and a half pound pork loin. I have been trying to incorporate a little bit more of this in our budget or in our diets because not only am I on a Weight Watchers budget <laughs> with points, I am on a budget budget with the money. And pork tenderloin is a nice lean white meat that, um, it's cheaper than eating chicken breast, boneless, skinless chicken breast all the time. So um, I got this and then I cut it into pork chops because pork chops cook faster than per pork loin. Um, and I ended up getting 11 pork chops out of this. And they're about three quarters of an inch thick, the pork chops. Some of them were closer to an inch. Some of them were closer to half an inch. It just, that's what happens when you eyeball it. But hey, it worked out. Um... So four of them are for dinner tonight with the shake and bake. Four of them are for dinner tomorrow with the marinade. And then the other three I froze and saved for a later day. So for the three I froze, I just put them in a Ziploc freezer bag, wrote the date on them, uh, got all of the air out of the bag or as much of it as I could. I've learned that the best way to get air out of um, a Ziploc bag is to kind of use the edge of a counter and put the like meat at the bottom like it kind of let gravity kind of push the air out of the bag because when you use that like edge of the counter it it like seals off and doesn't let air go back the other way but it still pushes it out if that makes sense um so did that and then i went ahead and got my other pork chops in the bag for the marinade to set aside and now it's time for shake and bake i used the great value brand because i can't tell the difference between shake and bake and great value um shake and bake and they're the same amount of points so why not so basically if you've never made shake and bake before preheat your oven to 425 you put the packet of seasoning in the bag that they provide you toss a pork chop in it you shake it, you put it on your pan, and you bake it. Um, it tells you, like, if you have this many pork chops, bake it for, you know, this amount of time. For mine, it was 15 minutes to bake uh, four pork chops. There is one instruction on the box that I did not follow, and that is to wet the pork chop before you shake it in the stuff. Um... I read somewhere that like rinsing off your meat and like washing your meat actually adds bacteria to it and it can, you know, not be good. Um, so I chose to skip that step and the coating stuck to the pork chops just as good as it did when I previously used to do this and I would wet the pork chop. So do with that information what you will. Obviously, like I don't know that they would put that 
in the box instructions if it really was that bad. But also, err on the side of... I, I personally decided to err on the side of caution because it's an unneeded step anyway. Um, so yeah, there you go. The longest part of this dinner was legitimately waiting for the oven to preheat, honestly. It took so long for my oven to get to 425, um, but once it did, everything went super quick. While I finish uh, shaking and baking these pork chops, um, I thought like, we could use this time to catch up. And, uh, you know, I can let you, how, let you know how life's been going. Um, I have not, you know, I've been, a, I took about a nine month break from YouTube and some things happened during that nine month break that I took from YouTube. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. So I guess first we'll talk about weight because I mean, you're here, Weight Watchers, what I eat in a day. That was part of my journey. Um, I wanted to like lose weight before I got pregnant and all of that stuff. Um, so talking about weight my first trimester went pretty well I was able I obviously wasn't on Weight Watchers at that point I wasn't tracking anything but I was able to maintain like a relatively balanced diet um with the exception of my one food craving the entire time was like caucho e pepe which is so funny because I had never had it <laughs> before pregnancy I watched like a YouTube video like two months before I got pregnant of like celebrity chef making um celebrities favorite meals and he like made he said one of Justin Bieber's favorite meals was caucho a pepe and so he showed the recipe and uh I watched it and I was like oh yeah that looks good I, you know I can't blame Justin Bieber for that because that looks it's cheese and pasta and pepper who doesn't like that um but I'd never tasted it, never had it, whatever. When I tell you, like, I just started craving it. Um, one day, I was like, how am I craving something I've never had? But I did not stop craving it. I still actually crave it every now and then with the breastfeeding um, cravings. So, fun fact. But that was really my only craving throughout the entire thing. And I was able to, you know, follow some of the rules, eat healthy for the first trimester. Second trimester... What I lacked in cravings, I made up for in food aversion. <laughs> Let me tell you, the list of things that I all of a sudden could no longer eat was growing by the minute. And one of the things that unfortunately made it on that list was chicken. And if you watched any of my videos before, you know that's a problem for me. I used to eat chicken like pretty much every day. Um because I one I liked it. You can do so many things with it. Ha like it takes on the flavor of like what you're cooking basically. Um but two it was zero points on weight watchers and it's lean and it ticks a lot of the boxes. But anyway, Nope, no chicken of any kind, not even Chick-fil-A. And it wasn't until like halfway through my third trimester that I could eat Chick-fil-A again. And then it was like a couple of weeks after the baby was born that I could eat like chicken at the house again. Um, but with all of that said... I um really was able to uh still maintain some form of balance. It wasn't pretty. And it was a lot more unbalanced than it probably should have been, especially considering that I was pregnant, but um I ended up gaining 20 pounds exactly during my pregnancy. Um which was really like I thought was a lot um because my goal was to gain or not my the goal the doctor told me that the um for someone like my size that the healthy amount to gain would be 10 to 20 pounds um so I was a little on the the bigger side of that however um 
my baby was eight pounds and I don't know if this is too gross to say on the internet but my placenta was also eight pounds which means I really only gained like four pounds um which is really that like made me so happy um that I did like pretty okay and I stuck to the goal and I heard so many people like when I first got pregnant was talking about like what the doctor told me healthy weight gain was they were like just ignore what he said it's impossible it's the like you can't like stay within the healthy like weight gain no one does it is what it is so the fact that I actually did like I don't know I was really proud of that however I'm also not that proud of it because it was by pure luck there were it because of the food aversions we were eating out like every single day um and a lot of fast food because like when something sounded good it sounded good and then like the things that sounded consistently good were um like caucho e pepe and macaroni and cheese and oh noodle and company opened in our town during my pregnancy noodle and company macaroni and cheese chick-fil-a macaroni and cheese those were delicious um yeah, and then there were so many nights that, like, my husband was eating food in another room. And um, because the smell of it, like, really made me sick. So, anyway, that's kind of how I managed, like, weight gain over pregnancy, how I did. Um, I just did my best. I didn't track anything. I didn't follow any special, like, pregnancy diet or anything like that. Um, and, yeah, it worked out for me. But enough about that. Let's talk about these carrots that I'm making. So I use baby carrots when I make these. Um, Thanksgiving, I just toss in the whole, like, two cups full on carrots because I usually, they end up getting cooked a little longer with, you know, everything else that's getting cooked and all the hoopla that's happening. Um, oh, I don't even think I said. These are our Thanksgiving carrots, just a lighter version of it. So I'll give you the Thanksgiving recipe. I'll also obviously give you the lighter version of it recipe because that's what we're having. The lighter version is three points. I have no idea how many points the Thanksgiving version is. So, um, but for a nighttime meal, I went ahead and cut all of those carrots in half um, so that they would cook a little bit faster. So the lighter recipe for this carrots is one tablespoon of butter, two, car- two cups of carrots, and one tablespoon of honey. So you melt the butter, then you add the carrots and the honey in the pan, and you cook them on medium to medium high heat uh, for however, until they reach the consistency that you want with the carrots. Um, I like mine to have just a little bit of bite left in them, and it took about the same 15 minutes that the um, pork chops were cooked on to get to that consistency. Um, So... They were so good. And, of course, these carrots taste like a comfort food to me because, like I said, we have them every Thanksgiving. And um, they're, they're so tasty, even the lightened version. But the more decadent, the more expensive on Weight Watchers, if you will, the more the Thanksgiving, the special version of this recipe is two tablespoons of butter, two cups of carrots still, two tablespoons of honey, and two tablespoons of brown sugar. Um, and they're obviously really good that way, but they're, the lightened version is also super duper good. Um, and I love them. I can't recommend them enough. They're gen- genuinely, genuinely so easy to make. Oh, I forgot about like one of my other pregnancy cravings wasn't really a pregnancy craving but um it was it was something that always sounded good during my pregnancy like I never craved it but when it was offered to me I also never said no and that was a Caesar salad with steak in it and then eventually that turned into just a Caesar salad and that's what we that's the other side we're having for dinner tonight I didn't do anything fancy though I just opened a bag because it's a bagged salad uh, and it has all of the, you know, cheese and the dressing is pretty fattening, 
it was five points. So that's my 13 points for the dinner. Five for the pork chop, five for the salad, and three for the carrots. This dinner, like I said, so good. It was just, just like comfort food to the max and um, super easy. And you'll also see me right now. I am making tomorrow night's dinner. Like I said, I'm recording the voiceover after I've eaten that dinner. And that was probably one of the best things I've had in a while. So I will make a video of just that recipe soon. Um, but in the meantime, I will tell you what I'm putting in that marinade for those four pork chops. Okay, bonus recipe here. It's one tablespoon of oil, half a teaspoon of seasoning salt, two thirds cup of honey, a quarter cup low sodium chicken broth. Um, we didn't have that, so I did a quarter cup of water with a quarter teaspoon of the chicken bouillon powder. Two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce, two tablespoons of minced garlic, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, quarter teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch, and then a pinch of red pepper flake. We had this without red pepper flake. I made so this is the second time I've made this recipe. The first time we did it as a pork loin. Um, and then this time I obviously cut them into chops so that it would cook a little faster. My parents came over for dinner with the pork loin, so we left out the pepper flakes because they are not, like, anytime I cook something with black pepper in it, they're like, what's spicy in here? And I'm like, black pepper? Anyway. Um, and so we left out the red pepper flake for them. I added it in here because tonight it was just my husband and I that ate it. And, um, it did add that just a touch of a kick and it, I would highly recommend the red pepper, um, flake. And if you don't like spicy foods, just do very little. Um, but if you really don't like spicy foods, like if you think black pepper is spicy, um, then that's fine too. It, it tastes good without it. But if you can handle literally black pepper, um, then that extra little pinch of red pepper flake is definitely worth it. And then for those pork chops, I just cooked them on 425 for 15 minutes because my thinking was it shouldn't take longer to cook than the uh, um, shake and bake. But for whatever reason, it probably took about 25 minutes. I'm not sure if maybe I just had some thicker chops. Um in that round that I had cut or what, but that is, um, that is what it was. And then that meal I served over some white rice and stir fry vegetables. So I will, like I said, I'll make a dedicated video. If I remember, I'll come back and link that video below here so that you can see like, um, what I like, you can see the recipe, but, um, if not, then that that's the recipe. I think I got this online. If I find it, I'll link the recipe down below as well. Um, but yeah, so tasty and so easy. And I really appreciated how easy the shake and bake was because it allowed me to prep it. And then tonight it felt just as easy because, all of the hard work had already been done. Um, but yeah. I guess the other life update I need to give you guys is that I, during my pregnancy, was diagnosed with POTS. Um, I don't remember what that acronym stands for. It's a lot of words, but basically it means I can pass out at any moment. Um, in June, so I had low blood pressure my whole pregnancy. Um, and it kind of all came to a head in June when I got my hair done, I was paying. And then all of a sudden I like passed out, traumatized my hairdresser, but thank God she was there because she caught me and made sure I didn't hit anything on my way down. And they even made sure I was wearing a dress and they made sure that my dress stayed down. They were, they were very nice. The mailman came and checked on me. It was very scary. I woke up. I hear someone screaming, I need her face because they had my, I, my phone was still on the counter from where I was paying 
and they had used my cell phone to unlock my, or use my face to unlock my cell phone and call my husband. Um, and so that happened in June. And then I wasn't able to get an appointment with a cardiologist until August. And then my baby was born in September. So for like most of my second and third trimester, I, um, was like having these low blood pressure drops and had no idea why it was happening, what was causing it, and was just scared to like leave my house or to overexert myself. And it was like really hard um, to manage. Once I got the POTS diagnosis, it was fine. I was fine. I was a lot better. Um, And I was able to do a little bit more because I understood like what was causing it. And it was like, oh, you know, if I'm going to have, like, I'm not just going to randomly pass out. If I'm going to have a tachycardic spell, my heart rate's going to race and I feel it before it happens. So good. And it's usually going to be right after I stand up within two minutes of me standing. And if I start, my heart rate starts to accelerate. I just need to sit down, prop my feet up and try again in a little bit. Um, so yeah, most of that has gone away since I had the baby. So I don't know if I technically have POTS anymore, but that was a big thing that happened, um, during my pregnancy. But yeah, that's all the catch up time we have. This is what dinner looked like. We'll talk later. It's about to go down. Um, one of these cookies, eight points. I had 16 points left after dinner. Probably because I didn't eat till one o'clock today, which I do not recommend. But life happens, so I'm gonna have a cookie. I am having the pita sandwich. Um, it is 12 points, so I dipped into my weeklies a little bit. However, the cheese on the sandwich was seven, so if I really wanted to, I could have made the sandwich for the eight points I had left, but um. I didn't want to, so it, it kind of like get tired at the end of the night and I'm just like, screw it a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's that. When you get complete, I lost four tenths of a pound. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what I eat in today videos, go ahead and subscribe because I make a ton of these videos. Um, like, comment, do all the YouTube stuff and I will see you.